Howdy folks. So I'm not fishing because it's freezing cold outside. It's still 2020, not 2021 yet. And this is my canoe. So this canoe did me good. Bought it used uh, for like 150 bucks. I was happy to get it. And, it. and it did me real well for quite a long time. But on my last uh, outing with it, Notice a little water coming up, and it's a 1970s model, uh, American Fiber Light, made out of Illinois. So she's been in the water a lot, and if you're in the water a lot, you're going to get some scrapes, and you're going to get some dings, and you're going to get some holes. This one in particular is the one I need to take care of. I figured if I'm going to take care of this one, might as well grab a Sharpie. And I've already done this, but it sat outside. But now that it's cold and I can't really go fishing, I figured, what well, better time, stick this in the garage and, uh, and get to work on it. So that's the plan. Let's get to work. 33 degrees currently, got the heater going there. Got a hole here. Got some damage going on here, some right here, and some right here. Now this discoloration that may or may not show up, I got some of that flex seal. I figured I wanted to get on the water, and if the best, fastest way for me to get on the water, if they can make a screen door boat out of flex seal, surely I can put some flex seal on this stuff and get back out on the water. Didn't work. I have no faith in the stuff. I uh, ended up uh, worse than I was to start with. So what I'm going to do is take this, take this, this sharpie, and then just do a, you know, get a visual here of, of what I'm going to do. Because if I'm going to make these repairs, I might as well, while I got all the stuff out, go ahead and and just touch up a few other spots, like this deep scratch. It's not a crack just a scratch but uh, might as well go ahead and sand that down get her smooth again same thing with that that's a scratch not a crack but what I love I'm gonna miss this because this whole process is gonna take this birch pattern I'm gonna lose it because I gotta sand I gotta sand all this down I gotta get the decay out and then I got to get the bondo going and uh, I gotta do some sanding and I'm gonna lose I'm gonna lose this finish so this whole thing is gonna get repainted so what I'm gonna do is uh, set you guys down I'm gonna spend some time with the sharpie and just go over you know some things that I wanna look at while I'm sanding and grinding and uh, just want to patch up because if you're going to take the time to do it you might as well get it all done right so let me get let me get this going and I'll get right back with you I've just got the, uh, the boat all marked up where I need to uh, spend some time and attention and did mark this one up and obviously needs a little attention here and I'm going to get uh, get all this done uh, so I'm going to start off with this paint and rust uh, stripper I'm just going to chuck that up into the old black and decker I have about 20 drills around here and this is not my best one but I have no idea where my best one is so we'll uh, we'll see if that works now one of the most important things when before you start sanding on fiberglass is uh, you need to know that the particles when you sand fiberglass if that gets into your lungs uh, it will attach itself to the walls of your lungs and then your lungs will basically absorb that material and create scar tissue over it and it will diminish your ability to breathe normally when I lost this due to the leak my immediate fix was to buy another canoe and it's good I like it it's a Bass Pro Shop model, 
a canoe and uh, I think it's a rogue river anyway that one has served me through 2020 but I really want to get this guy <laughs> That is awesome for this 1970s fiberglass. Uh, 1970s fiberglass and, and the uh, imagine there's a clear coat they put on this on top of the fiberglass. So that cut right through the clear coat and uh, got got the uh, imperfections mostly is what I was looking for. Uh, there was a, a, a significant gash here but I was able to get down to it. There was nothing structural damage there. It was just fiberglass. Uh, I'm going to hit this probably with some 80, 60 grit sandpaper here just to get this looking good. Uh, this right here, I might have to go a little deeper on this guy. This is fine. And then here, I actually went through the boat. So this has, look at that. It's just, that's how bad it is. So what I'm going to do is, I don't have a grinder, so I'm going to get the Dremel out, and I'm going to find how far this goes back, but that is definitely a problem that we've lost that much material. So I'm expecting way worse over here on this side, but uh, this is definitely no bueno. So got some glass work ahead of us here. Possibly some here. I'm going to lightly touch that with the Dremel too. But uh, yeah, this is just... Look, listen, listen to that. This is like a potato chip. Okay, so... I need to uh, scuff this up. I don't think that goes pretty deep. And then everything else is uh, has, has been uh, taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and strip this off too. So, got all these here taken care of. Got all my surface gouges here, uh, here, here, here. I got that long scratch out of there. I, I might just sand that, just sand it smooth because... I might put some resin on it. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. All right. So these are all done. We have we have damage here, and I'm suspecting I'm going to find the same kind of damage here, 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 maybe in this area. We might have to do a rather large repair on this guy. But I've seen worse, so let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I'm going to get the music back on, and we will set you guys up right here in my toolbox. <laughs> Okay, so that little piece right here, that little tiny hole right here, this is just like a cavity in your teeth. That little hole here probably got in and sat behind all this, that scratch there, but a little soft right in here, solid right here, back into the soft. 
back into the soft stuff here. And then we're back to solid again. So what we're looking at looking at a patch about this shape now was a little hole and a, and a scratch but this is still soft too I don't think I've gone back far enough back here but we'll see let's get the Dremel out clean this up but before we do that let's hit the uh, let's hit the uh, the rust wheel on these other spots that are now covered up I'm not a professional fiberglass guy. I'm just a guy that has a canoe, has a hole in it, and fiberglass you can get anywhere. Don't have the professional tools, but I do have a Dremel. From what experience I have, I personally like this tool. It's a spiral cutting tool. You can plunge with it. You can side cut any direction with it. And you can make some really cool stuff happen with it. I'm going to see how far back this decay goes. And see if... I mean, I, I feel... I feel pretty good. Up to here. But I don't know how far this... I mean, that feels... This whole section right here feels pretty good. I'm telling you. This right here feels pretty good. So I think these are going to stay separate holes. This hole here, however... I don't know if it's going to come back and join this one. We'll, we'll just ha we'll see once we let this guy eat. We'll see what we have left. And this guy over here, well, we'll we'll eat on that too. <laughs>
solid canoe. There's an aluminum channel down in there, and we managed to save this much. Now it might it might not make a hill of beans to take that out or leave it, but I think uh, for this repair, uh, I'm just going to leave it. So we'll get this all suctioned out with the uh, hose. Uh, this turned out to be okay. This is pretty solid. I couldn't, other than the surface cracks, other than the surface cracks, couldn't find any issues right here. Uh, same thing back here. So this hole opened up pretty nice. Got another aluminum channel in there. We got good contact here. So we'll be able to do that repair pretty easy. So... If you take anything away from this video, anything at all, duct tape, even blue duct tape, very handy to have around. Here's where we are. It's uh, 7, 745. It's 30 degrees outside. I got these heaters cooking, and they're keeping it nice and warm and toasty inside the garage. We got all the decay cut out of the boat, and all the other imperfections and scratches and gouges uh, just uh, a light patch with some resin and some some uh, some mat will fix those up nice and, and easy um, what I plan to do because we have an overlight overnight low of 25 degrees and in about eight hours I'm gonna be walking into the woods uh, see if we can get a white-tailed deer so, knock on wood, I'm going to miss the birch, but that's, that's no longer an option, keeping the paint job. It's no longer an option, unless I paint the bottom and then just do a line. Nope, 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 no, I don't want that look. I don't want a painted bottom. I'm going to figure something out. I'm going to think about it. I'll tell you what, I was going to make this a one video, start to finish. But I'd like your guys' ideas. What would you do as far as paint if this were your project and it was in your cramped, crowded, overstuffed garage? What color would you paint this to make it ready for spring? Green? Yellow? Try to go back to the birch? Let me know in the comments. And yeah, light sanding. I'm gonna go get something to eat and I'm gonna go to bed. Cause hopefully I have a date with a white tailed deer tomorrow. We'll see you guys next time.